Good morning, good day, friends. I hope you're doing really well. This is Tracy Brown, your somatic nutrition therapist and attuned eating expert. And we are going to take a deep dive, right? Right off into 2021, which is why our fat phobia, this internalized fat phobia, why it is so hard to shake. So let's just start with self-compassion. Make sure your self-compassionate part of you is installed or listen to this from that soft ears and eyes perspective is that we are all born into this really broken world system right around um human beings needing to have some kind of structures in place that say that one body type look shape size is better than the other pretty arbitrarily and it doesn't mean that there aren't health risks to very low on you know, the lower end of BMIs and higher end of BMIs. We are not going to talk about and not do the health hand wringing thing here in this video. You know, we're, we have plenty of videos that we've talked about in the past and we'll continue to talk about working on actual health behaviors that can hedge our bets, right? We're not talking about that today. We're talking about actually feeling inside and out that there's something wrong inherently with having a bigger body. That's what we're doing this week. You know, we're, so we're talking about internalized fat phobia. And so we're not going to, as much, we're going to acknowledge all the external things that make it harder for people to just show up at the doctor's office and get good medical care. Of course that exists. So we always disclaim that because it is true in people's circumstances. It is true that people get shamed and judged for no good reason besides the fact that they just are at the grocery store walking down the street existing and they might have a bigger body and some someone has decided to make a comment about that for whatever reason. It's always hard to know sometimes because we're not in somebody's heart. But what I want to talk about a little bit today is there are four things that I see. So there are four things emotionally that I see that are needs that people have that keep stuck that internalized fat phobia. And then there are two reasons, the inside stuff and the outside stuff that are the root causes of that. So these roots go with that as well. So I wrote them down because you're going to see these. I know they're backwards. You're going to see these little cards a lot, probably on and off this year. So the first one is, well, let's go to the two things first. The two things that I see people really, it is going to take time, no matter how much you know stuff, um, no matter how much you understand or how much therapy you've had is that internally, if we are in a chronic stress, fight, flight, freeze, or please response, we have to have something, especially when we are vulnerable and we don't have much support or resource, we are going to attach to something. And sometimes that attachment to something also hurts us, right? So let's say that you were fat shamed to the doctor when you were 10, but you have to go because your mom or dad takes you. And you know, any parent or parental figure takes you. And so they take care of you and they allow you to be shamed or don't really help you repair the shame of being fat shamed because you're going through puberty or you're just a bigger kid and or your doctor did that to you and um, you know, that's an authority figure. So of course, there's a decision to be made at that very young age intellectually, like with a little bit of cognitive ability we have at these young ages, is that either I'm bad and wrong or they're bad and wrong. So what would be dangerous about deciding they're bad and wrong? Well, I mean, they have more power than you. Maybe they can hurt you. Maybe they can withhold care from you. Those are all things that are, um, that impact our ability to be able um, to feel like that we deserve love. So here's my four things here. Love, safety, worth, and significance. If you've been shamed for something that you could have no say over, I mean, you don't have any say over if you're a tall kid, a short kid, a thin kid, a fat kid, you don't really have any say over that naturally. That is your genetic blueprint. Now, of course, weights can be impacted by our behaviors, that's true. But at the end of the day, if you're eating normatively, eating from hunger and fullness, eating a variety of food, moving your body a little bit, you're gonna have a really stable weight and you're going to change what the seasons of your life appropriately, right? If that's interfered with, 
you're going to stop, stop trusting yourself and start being attached to the sources that at least will criticize you less or you feel more safe with. Hence, you get attached to the belief that that is bad. And that's how that gets internalized right there. So I will be more lovable if I'm less fat. I will be more significant. I will have more worth. I will even have more safety possibly if I'm less fat. And so that's how that stuff internal gets internalized and gets stuck. So when people say, I know better, of course you do. As an adult here now in 2021, you've read the books. Um, maybe you've worked with somebody, maybe a coach of some kind, maybe, um, you don't do a podcast. I mean, you've really, you've done the research, you've taken college courses on it. You understand that like inherently there is not a better body to have health wise. We can work on our health through food and, um, purpose and good connection and trauma healing and movement, maybe some medication, maybe some supplements, all of these things that you can use your, your good use of will and energy for, you can do that. But that doesn't always change inside how you feel that like when you see yourself in the mirror, you're looking at the flaws through which and the eyes through which you were first told that you had the flaws. And that can be pretty hard. You don't just, you don't just emotionally and neurobiologically shake that by reading a book. So I want you all to think about today and the rest of this week is when you start to think about even accepting your body. Let's just be do imagination and work a second. If you just even think about looking in the mirror and not hating your stomach size, or if you were neutral even about your body, what you look like, you weren't trashing yourself, you weren't wishing you were smaller, you weren't um, even, maybe even let go of like, you've given forgiveness, like, oh, well, of course my body weighs more. I've been on 10,000 diets and I was a really good girl dieter or whatever and I, I did all that and it still must I did something wrong if you're able to get to a place where it's like maybe none of that's true that I did anything wrong maybe there's nothing wrong with my belly if you're looking in the mirror and you're considering these things notice what happens inside do you clench up do you get mad do you want to check out do you want to argue with me um, do you distract yourself and get really busy? What do you do when you start to think about what if I didn't think these things? And notice if it feels like it's triggering one of these three things in your system. If that feeling of spaciness, you know, had a word or a sensation or an age, what would it be? You know, is this about like if, if I were to stop hating my body, I wouldn't have any love or worth or safety or significance. What we're talking about here is some trauma stuff that we've got to work on. It's it, I mean, usually we have to do it in safe relationship, in, in a space where it's like we are held and allowed all this like sensation and ick to come up and to be separated from your body. That's essentially the work that has to be done. This is why I'm always talking about nervous system regulation and um, trauma healing and all that. It's because we get body shamed in relationship. So the only way to heal that is to have your own installation of like a competent, safe, loving, truthful adult, and probably somebody else that can give us some, the groundwork with how to do that. So that's why this video is here. So in Wednesday and Friday's videos, we're going to go a little deeper into how to do some of that self-compassion, um, regulation work. And Notice what happens when you watch, you know, everything that I put out this week. I really want you to pay attention to what happens in your body. Do you feel shame that you don't have this figured out yet? Do, um, you know, that's perfectionism. That's a defensive strategy against feeling like if I don't keep it together or get it right, I won't have one of these four things. Is it like want to argue with me? That like, well, Tracy, what do you know? You recovered in a smaller body, so, you know, you have no right to speak. Maybe not. I don't know. All I know is that um, I think it's really important to, when you're noticing that anger come up, be really clear, is that about me? Is it about some part of you that feels like, you know, jealousy as a teacher too? As if that there's, like, I have something that other people don't get or have 
Um, I know if you don't know my, my story, um, you know, there, there's a lot of a trauma there behind my eating disorder. So it really wasn't about wanting to be part of the cultural acceptancy. I just wanted to disappear and get the heck out of Dodge because I thought life was just pointless and stupid and <laughs> it was all dangerous, you know? So I come from it really from a trauma perspective, um, and was heartily disgusted as a teenager and young adult about that we value people based on body. I've never thought that was okay. And that's where I'm coming from. And it's okay to be mad about that for sure, because it is wrong. And wanting to have a place of worth and significance beyond what you look like is, is the point of this work. We want to have body neutrality. Like you just want to have a body, put our clothes on, get to the business of doing our life, right? That's why most people come to see me. And that's, so that's the way I teach is like, you know, creating um, a thriving life that looks like that. You know, maybe there's just fear about that. Like, Tracy, who will I be? How will I, like, contain all this overwhelm if I stop hating my body? Yeah, it's a good question. We need to work on some of those tools and skills as well and learn how to know the difference between um, emotional hunger and fullness and something that Paula Scataloni calls resonant hunger and fullness. Like, are we eating based off our flight or flight or freeze or please responses and sensations? Are we eating because of biological hunger and fullness for the most part? Again, part of that involves pleasure and connection all that as well. So that's included. So anyway, this is going to be like, you know, nutrition therapy session on video this week for sure. So take notes, watch these videos again, reach out to me if you feel like this is like, wow, what are you talking about here? I just want to like not think about food anymore. And I know that the reason that that hasn't happened for you yet, and it does take time, even with doing the deep nuanced work, is that if you've been doing this a while and you're feeling like, why am I so stuck? Why can't I quite get this? It's because this work is missing. It hasn't happened yet for you. And that's the next step. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have questions, please tag me below. If you're feeling kind of shy, you can, you can private message me. That's fine. And we'll try to answer that in the next um, live video. And again, we will be doing all, summaries of all these videos every single week over on my blog, tracybrownrd.com. If you don't um, get those or read those as well. So all of this stuff is summarized with the videos there every single Saturday. So you won't miss out anything if you get behind. So no worries about that. Thank you all so much for watching live. I appreciate you as we kind of, I don't know about you, kind of like a very slow easing into my Monday of 2021. And so thank you for being here with me as well. And I do hope that these videos encourage you and give you lots to think about and work on. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.